Hello. So this video is going to be about tracking objects with your mouse. Uh, just to make this a bit darker, I'll change that to black. Um, so the first, there are three different ways of doing this that I'm going to try and cover in this video. The first is parallax movement, which is this setting right here. Uh, to demo that, we need to import some images. So I'm going to grab this random Minecraft image. And parallax doesn't really make sense unless you have multiple images. So I'm going to add this little overlay that I made. Well, I didn't make the image. Oops. I just cut out the center of it so I could make a wallpaper out of it. And then we'll just make this bigger. So there's a little creeper face that you can look through. Uh, so the parallax setting is mouse. It's this mouse influence. So it's not really mouse tracking. It just lets you... I don't know. It's a form of mouse tracking. It's just not a good form of mouse tracking. You wouldn't want to do this for something like complex, but you can, you know, you can see this. It works kind of, and I can set this to like 0.5, and then add the mine pick on top of this. And then if I crank up the parallax of the mine pick, you know, it kind of tracks your mouse. It's not going to work well as like a wallpaper, but this does technically, by definition, it does track your mouse. Um, so that's it. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but you can. That is one of the methods of making a mouse tracking wallpaper. Uh, the other way to do it is what I'm going to call particle tracking. I guess it makes sense. This, so this would be the second method. I'm going to hide that for now, and just for the sake of cleanliness, I'm going to disable the camera parallax. So I'm going to add a particle system. And we're going to browse, no, nope. we're going to import the same mind pick we just used, and then we're going to change this into a single particle system. So it's translucent, or it's additive, we're going to change it to translucent. Uh, we don't want its alpha to fade. We don't want it to change color. We want it to be a single size. We only want one of them. Uh, what else do we want? We want it to always spawn in the center, and we want it to not have a velocity. So this is our base particle. If I set it now, uh, we just have one particle sitting there, and it will do its particle thing. It will make it live for a very long time. So to make it mouse tracking, we're going to add a operator of control point force. Then we're going to add a control point locked to your mouse, and it's on control point one. We're going to add control point one in here. So the threshold is how big of a radius around the particle. So this is 500. If I made this uh, 10, I would have to get directly on top of this center. I can't even do it with 10. It won't work. Uh, 100, you can get a bit closer. 10,000, it does it from pretty much anywhere. So threshold is the size of the radius around it. Scale is the magnitude of the force being applied. So if I go to 1,000, 10,000, now it will track my mouse and it will fly towards my mouse unless my mouse gets too far away, which I don't know if I can do at 10,000, but it's basically going to just orbit my mouse. But that doesn't really work well because it's just, it's not, it's not sticking to your mouse, it's just kind of orbiting around doing its own thing. So to fix that, we're going to crank up the scale really high. So that means it's going to be attracted very strongly to your mouse. And obviously this also isn't working, it's just going to go crazy and orbit your mouse. So to fix that, you go to movement, and you add drag. Drag slows everything down, eventually, but it's still kind of crazy. So what the goal here is, is to crank the drag up really high and also crank the control point up really high. So this is already probably more than high enough. So we'll just make the drag like 10. So now it slows down really quick, but it also very strongly tracks your mouse. So this is what I used to do when I wanted to make a mouse tracking object, is I would use a particle system with a control point force that pulls it to your mouse. And it works. It works well. Uh, but then Tim, one of the developers for Wallpaper Engine, posted on the Steam forums that there is a script you can use to lock an image to your mouse. So that's the third way I'm going to cover in this video, because this was new to me as well. 
Uh, so we're going to hide the particle, and this is the image. So this is not a particle system. This is just an image file. And what we're going to do is grab this oops, snippet of code. So this is parameter update function of, we're going to put it in the origin of input your cursor world position. I'm not a code expert. I don't exactly know what that's doing. But how you use it is you grab that snippet of code, you select your image layer, you go into the origin cog bind script, and we're going to paste it into here and click OK. And that did nothing because you have to run the script. So when we click Run Script, and running scripts is automatic. When you when you run a wallpaper, it is running its scripts. But that script just updates the position of the image with your mouse, so it is locked to your cursor. Uh, one other thing you can do with this that's kind of neat is if I open up Photoshop, and I want to just quickly drag this into here. And we're going to make, say, two copies of it and make one straight up and one straight over and then line them up here-ish. And I only know this because I've already done it once, but we need to resize the frame so that everything fits. And then we need to reposition this center to be on the center of this. And this only kind of makes sense because I'm doing this very specific example. But what I'm doing is building a sprite that is going to lock to your pointer, but your pointer locks in the center of the image. So the center of the image is going to be here. So I'm going to, how big is this? Image size, I'll go 256, file, scripts, export layers to file. Do not trim. We're going to export into there. Okay. That's going to drop those three images into here. So one kind of neat thing that you can do is if you import multiple images at the same time, you can import them into a, I have no idea what you would call this or if it has a term, but I'm going to drag all three of these images at the same time into Wallpaper Engine. And what that's going to do is it's going to put all three of these into one material. And it's going to give us a frame duration, and I'm just going to set this to point 0.1, so it's fairly quick. And what that's going to do is essentially create a GIF. It's technically not a GIF, it's just a... It's three images that are cycling through each other. So now I can do this and have that same origin script on it, and I'm going to delete the old one. So now if I run this script, I have a little mining pick thing. I don't know if that's useful, but you can lock an object or make an animated object and lock it to your mouse. It's kind of neat. I hope it helps.